Hey, what's going on everybody? Gareth here with FCP Euro. Welcome back to another DIY video. Today, we're going to be replacing front wheel bearings on a F15 X5 xDrive 35i. So the steps we're going to be doing today are going to apply predominantly to any F16 or F15 xDrive vehicle. However, if you have a non xDrive vehicle, so an S-Drive 35i in either the F16 X6 or the F15 X5. Uh, this is going to be a very similar process, uh, just you're not going to have to worry about a front axle being in the way. Uh, so a little bit easier for you who are watching this, but everything we go through is going to be a pretty standard process for both the X-Drive vehicles and the S-Drive vehicles. So with that said, let's talk about some of the tools we're going to need to do this job and then we'll go ahead and get right into it. All right, so some of the tools you're going to need for this DIY, particularly on the socket end of things, a 36mm 12-point socket for the axle nut, an E18 Torx for the brake caliper carrier, 5mm Allen for a couple of the mounting screws for, like, let's say, your uh, ABS wheel speed sensor and the bracket uh, associated with it, 6mm Allen for your brake rotor set screw, 7mm Allen for your guide pin bolts on the brake uh, carrier, a T60 Torx for the actual uh, mounting bolts for the wheel hub assembly, a 17 millimeter socket for your wheels, and then kind of along with that, you're gonna want a variety of ratchets, different lengths and things like that. Uh, definitely punches and drifts, uh, brake caliper, hanger is super useful for getting the caliper up out of the way, pry bar, flathead screwdriver, in this case, probably gonna end up using both, a really good hammer, torque wrench capable of doing Upwards of 140 new meters of torque. Uh, if you have a torque wrench that can do torque angle, that's gonna be good as well because the wheel carrier bolts or the actual hub assembly bolts need to be torque angled. Uh, along with that, a couple of specialty tools you might wanna have on hand. Uh, some of these axles are pretty tight fit through the wheel bearing or through the wheel hub. So having this puller tool to pull the axle through uh, is gonna be super useful. Uh, scotch Bright for cleaning up the mating surface on your knuckle and also a variety of impact guns, also super uh, helpful in getting the job done. Uh, but other than that, these are pretty much all the tools we're gonna be using this DIY, and let's go ahead and get right into it. Step one, we need to remove the wheel, 17 millimeter. All right, first thing we need to do is remove the brakes from the car, so we're gonna start here with the rotor. It's got a six millimeter uh, set screw for the brake disc. Uh, sometimes these can be stubborn to remove, depending on how corroded they are. While we're up front here, we're gonna remove the anti-rattle clip. So take a screwdriver. Sometimes these have a lot of spring tension on it, so you won't be able to do it with your fingers. Take a screwdriver, come in here between the rotor and the anti-rattle clip, and you'll depress it. And you should be able to get it right off. You can see the hooks on the anti-rattle clip. This in these two holes here. The caliper was flexing quite a bit because it's had a lot of spring tension on it. So I just kept rocking it back and forth until it released from those two holes in the caliper. All right, now we're gonna remove the guide pin dust caps. Uh, I just find it easier to use a flathead screwdriver to pry them off. If your car is missing these caps, make sure you get replacements. They prevent uh, dust and moisture from getting into these guide pin boots. That can prevent the caliper from operating correctly. Guide pins are seven millimeter Allens. And also, when you're threading these, you can actually see the threads on the back side. And what I like to do is uh, I'll just take a flathead screwdriver. I'll uh, try to catch the threads on the guide pins and I'll just basically push it out. Now the caliper is loose. We're gonna pull it off the carrier. And uh, we're gonna hang it with a caliper hook up and out of the way. Wanna prevent it from hanging from the brake hose. So I'm actually just gonna hook it right here to the spring on our strut. That works out pretty good. I'm gonna cheat on the caliper carrier. <clears throat> I'm gonna use a uh, impact gun, but it's an E18. And fortunately this rotor is nice and loose. So it's gonna come right off. Did brakes on this car maybe seven months ago, so we cleaned the face of the hub up at that time, and you can already see it rusted right back, but fortunately the rotor wasn't stuck to it. All right, we're gonna unstake our axle nut here. Happen to have a chisel, which is like the perfect size to get in there. 
but you want to try to unstake the axle nut as much as possible because uh, when you remove this nut, um, even though most impact guns will be power no powerful enough to break uh, this outside portion where it's staked, you don't want to damage any of the threads. So just basically uh, knocking this chisel under the stake mark and then trying to open it from there. Uh, axle nut size is 36 millimeter 12 point. All right, we got a five millimeter uh, screw that holds our ABS, uh, ABS wheel speed sensor in place. Gonna go ahead and remove that. Uh, I don't know, you may not have to actually remove the wheel speed sensor. I'm choosing to do it because when we remove this bearing, it is possible to potentially catch it and I'd prefer not to break it, so. And look how lucky we are, it just came right out. So we'll uh, hang that off to the side. Uh, now that the wheel speed sensor is out, we're going to go ahead and remove this upper bracket. Uh, reason for that is this upper bracket kind of blocks one of the wheel hub mounting bolts. So same five millimeter Allen. Uh, so that allows us a little extra room to work with. All right, now we're going to move um, our axle back through the wheel hub. We're not trying to push it all the way back through. We just want to get this moving. Um, these axles are kind of a borderline interference fit, so they do fit pretty tightly in there. Uh, factor in corrosion over several years, and they can be pretty difficult to remove. Uh, BMW has a special tool that bolts onto the wheel hub, and then it just pushes the axle hydraulically. So if you have like a hydraulic gear puller or even a manual gear puller, something that can do 10-ish tons, they'll probably do it. Um, we had these axles pushed through this wheel hub relatively recently. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a brass drift here. I'm going to hit on the head of the axle. Uh, reason I'm using brass is that's not going to deform the edge of this axle. Uh, brass is pretty soft, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple taps and see what happens. So now that we uh, knocked the axle back through the wheel hub, um, we're in a really good position to unbolt the wheel hub assembly from behind. Uh, even though this axle is still protruding through and it could still be stuck on the splines, if we unbolt the wheel hub and it's still stuck on the axle, if we tap it once, it's going to come loose. So um, now we can go ahead and unbolt the wheel hub assembly. All right, so for the bolts that are on this car, we're going to use a T60 socket to remove the wheel hub assembly. Uh, I believe this is an original wheel hub assembly on this car. I don't see any signs it's been replaced. Another thing to note, uh, the bolts do protrude through the mounting flange on this wheel hub assembly. Uh, so I just sprayed a little bit of penetrant on the end of those bolts. Uh, just to provide a little bit of lubrication as it's coming through uh, the hub assembly. I would imagine the inside of the hub assembly doesn't have any corrosion on it uh, where the bolt goes through. So I just want to make sure that there's a little bit of lubrication to help get these to move a little bit easier. And that's the corrosion I was talking about on the end of the bolt. Uh, like I said, it sticks through. Uh, so like this very tip here that's very dark. I uh, just threw some penetrant on there uh, hoping that it would lubricate the threads, but actually, in, in all honesty, this seems pretty clean, so uh, I don't think it was gonna be an issue one way or the other. I've had a couple of these wheel hub bolts that pass through the wheel hub assembly be really tight before coming through, uh, once you start to get into the corrosion. Same thing on uh, the back two bolts, T60. So now we're at the point where we can pull the wheel hub assembly off. However, if we're gonna be completely honest, uh, it's an aluminum knuckle, it's a steel hub, it's gonna be some corrosion, it's gonna be pretty tight. So I don't think you can just, maybe certain parts of the countries in the world, you can just pull this right off, but um, this one's not gonna be that way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a brass drift and I'm gonna hit on the ears of the axle. And I just wanna see if I can get this to move uh, sideways. That's also part of the reason why I wanted to pull the wheel speed sensor. Um, so we can get it to start spinning uh, hopefully that means that the corrosion's broken up enough inside that we can just hopefully pry it off. So let's see if it'll move. So I'm gonna thread uh, two of the bolts back in, one on the, as we're facing, bottom left hub assembly and also at the top right. And uh, I'm gonna use the bolts as a way of driving the hub out from the knuckle. All right, I'm gonna give this bolt a couple love taps from the top here. Not seeing any separation yet. 
I'm gonna go to a bigger, bigger drift. This is the bolt that I primarily hit against. The marks are from a chisel or a cold chisel. Uh, no marks left from the brass. So again, if you're gonna try to hit something with some force, brass is usually a, uh, is a good option. Now at this point, I'm gonna tap the axle again. And there we go, one hub assembly. Wouldn't say that was the most difficult hub assembly I've ever removed, but that one definitely had a little bit of fight in it. And uh, right here, you can see all the corrosion. So you're not only fighting it on the surface here, you're also fighting it on this little lip. And that little bit of corrosion ultimately is what's gonna fight you. Basically pinches the entire mounting flange. Also, if you ever have any ABS problems, I think this is a really good highlight. This is your tone ring right here. It is completely caked with debris. So probably a combination of brake dust, road grime, who knows. Um, so usually a lot of ABS problems, particularly on uh, wheel bearings that have the magnetic ring built in. Uh, just stuff being on the surface of that tone ring could cause interference with the wheel speed sensor. So that's what the wheel speed sensor looks like when it's installed. So it actually goes in there pretty deep. That's why we removed it. And uh, it's basically riding right along the surface here at the edge. So again, um, most of this debris is probably coming in through here. Might even be getting past the axle back here. There's no seal on the back of the knuckle, but um, there's nothing physically wrong with this bearing. It feels perfectly fine. Uh, but if you ever find yourself with an ABS problem and it's at one corner, it's most likely either a wheel speed sensor or it's a bearing issue. So now that I've gotten the whole thing apart, I removed the uh, backing plate. It's only held in by four 10 millimeter screws. The uh, reason I did that, I just want a little bit better access here to the mounting area where the hub goes. And I'm just taking this scotch bright pad and I'm knocking back as much of this surface corrosion as possible. Don't really want to use anything too aggressive. So I'm not trying to remove material here. I'm just trying to get rid of the stuff that's built up on the surface. So that the new hub, when we install it, should just drop into place. So it's a little bit of elbow work, but so we have our uh, new hub assembly here. Cleaned up as much of this corrosion as possible. Um, new hub should go on pretty nicely. Taking a little bit of this, uh, Lickle Molly 508 anti seize, and I'm going to put it on the splines of our axle shaft here. This should help prevent any corrosion in the future. This copper anti seize, or copper anti seize in general, is really good for like anti galling. So just putting a little bit on here. Like we're not gooping it up like crazy, we're just putting a little bit on. So the removing the axle from the hub, while it was relatively easy, this is a little bit of an interference fit. I don't want to pull the axle through the hub with the axle nut, that's kind of a big no-no. Uh, so we have this axle puller tool, we sell it in FCP Euro. Uh, threads on this are M27 by one and a half. I'm gonna pre-install this stub onto the axle and you'll see how this tool works shortly, but this is gonna make reinstallation of everything a lot easier. Now, if you look at the offset of the holes here on the knuckle, you'll see that the top is narrow, the bottom is wide. It's correspondent to how it is on the actual wheel hub assembly itself. So we are going to install it, uh, keeping all of that in mind. There's a little bit of Cosmoline, I think, that they put on this bearing to prevent any corrosion inside the packaging. So I'm just gonna wipe some of that off. And now at this point, we're just gonna line it up and uh, we're gonna slide it through. It actually looks like with a new bearing, everything kinda slid together really nice. Still gonna use this axle puller to pull the axle all the way through. <clears throat> Get it all lined up. And then from this point, we're gonna go ahead and start reinstalling our bolts. Uh, it's worth mentioning when you're installing these, they're one-time use only, they're all torque angled. 
Um, so when you buy the wheel bearing, there's gonna be a recommendation to also buy the bolts. And to that end, uh, it's worth noting that there's two style bolts. There's an M12 by one and a half and an M12 by one, two, five. They have two different torque specifications, different bearings are using different sizes. Uh, for some reason, BMW decided to switch the size of the bolt. Not really sure why, uh, but in this case, um, the SKF bearing is using the M12 uh, by one and a half. So when, when we're ready to torque the bolts down, uh, we'll talk about the torque spec, but for now, we're just gonna get the bolts in there hand tight. So we're gonna start the bolts by hand, get the threads engaged. Uh, the new bolts come with Loctite pre-applied. So no need to use Loctite since it's already part of the replacement bolt. Like I said on these, um, we're just gonna get it bottomed out and then we will apply the final torque spec to these bolts with the torque wrench and as well as take care of the torque angle. I left the bolts a little bit loose on the other side just in case we needed to wiggle anything around for alignment reasons, but you should thread right in. And the bearing itself is basically seated at this point, so. And I also wanna make sure that the hub assembly itself is physically bottomed out against the knuckle, which I could see it is sitting flat. So we're good on that front. Uh, if you're installing a wheel hub assembly that has M12 by one and a half uh, threads, torque specs will be 80 newton meters plus 90 degrees. If you're installing a, I don't wanna call it an updated bearing, but some of the newer bearings, uh, they're M12 by 1.25, which is fine thread. It's 120 new meters plus 90 degrees. So two different torque specs depending on the thread size. Uh, so just be aware of that when you're installing it. So in our case, we're gonna do 80 new meters and then 90 degrees rotation. So when we removed the uh, wheel speed sensor earlier and also this bracket, there's three uh, six millimeter Allen screws are removed. However, there's uh, two different sizes. You have your short and your long. Your long's gonna go for your wheel speed sensor. The short ones come up here on top of the knuckle for that bracket. So at this point, we just slide the wheel speed sensor back in. I wiped it off with a towel. So, you know, any kind of contaminants or dirt that were on there, I cleaned off. And uh, believe it or not, there is a torque spec for these fasteners. It's eight newton meters you want to go ahead and do so. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it down. So next up, we're going to reinstall our backing plate. It's held on by uh, four 10 millimeter screws. If you want to go ahead and torque those fasteners down, eight newton meters. I'm almost positive the axle actually came all the way in, which it did. Surprising because sometimes uh, with new hubs, things don't like to fit together very nicely so you have to use this puller tool to pull it through uh, but actually pull through on its own so that's fine just keep this tool handy whenever you're dealing with kind of axle removal uh, when it comes to reinstallation this makes it super easy next up we're gonna go ahead and put our brake rotor back on the new hub I'm not gonna put anything in between the hub face and the brake rotor. I don't personally like doing that. I used to do it, I don't do it anymore. Again, you put too much stuff on the wheel hub between the rotor and the wheel hub itself and you could cause a run out problem accidentally. I'm uh, installing the set screw for now. Uh, just to hold the rotor in place. What I'll probably end up doing is after I get everything back together, I'll pull the set screw back out, put a little dab of anti-seize on it. I usually do that just to make uh, removal in the future easier. Uh, by this point, we're ready to reinstall our, uh, our brakes. When you have your brake rotor off, it's also really important to wipe it down. You know, if you've touched your hands on it, you want to get kind of any grease or anything off of it. So I'm going to give this a wipe down before I reinstall the brakes. Again, these are E18. I'm just going to use this gun to uh, bring the bolt to have them seed it out, and then we'll torque them to 110 newton meters.
reinstalling the guide pins here. Um, all I did was uh, I cleaned them up with a scotch Brite pad, removed any of the surface contamination on them, and just reinstalling them dry. Used to lubricate these as well, but I don't do it anymore. I just installed them dry. Um, lubricants, unfortunately, uh, can attract dirt, which will uh, cause these to stop um, allowing for the caliper to slide back and forth. So I just make sure they're clean. I make sure the boot's in good condition and uh, shouldn't have to worry about it. Also went ahead and uh, re-lubricated the pads, clean those up, clean the carrier, all that good stuff. Like I said at the beginning of this video, now's a really good time to service your front brakes. Or if you're near uh, the point where you would need a brake service, uh, you know, change your rotors and pads and all that kind of stuff. Now's a good time to do it. But the brakes on this car are relatively new, so not doing that today. Torque spec on our guide pin bolts are going to be 30 newton meters. Remember, these are 7 millimeter Allens. And remember, pop the caps back on your dust boots. If the caps are missing, definitely replace them. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall the uh, anti-rattle clip. Should just push into place like that. You'll feel it click in. And now we're gonna reinstall, or actually install a new axle nut. Uh, what I do with these is I put a thin coating of oil on the backside where that flange is. Uh, so that when we go to torque it to the 420 newton meters that this requires, uh, you get an actual torque. It's not gonna, just gonna bind up against the face of the hub. It'll actually get to that torque versus getting stuck. And lastly, because we reinstalled, we reinstalled a new axle nut, which is what you should do. Go ahead and stake it in place so that it can't move. So once you have the car back down on the ground, torque the lug bolts to 140 newton meters in a crisscross pattern, and also make sure you pump the brakes a couple times. You want to make sure that the pads are back in contact with the rotor surface because you had the brakes off the car. You might find that that first brake pedal push, if you haven't done so, is not gonna feel too good. And if you're driving the road, you might scare yourself. So whenever you have the brakes off, no matter what, even if you haven't pushed the piston back in, make sure that pad is in contact, make sure you have a good pedal feel before you drive off. Uh, other than that, every method we showed you in this video in terms of removing the axle from the wheel hub, which could be a little bit tricky, you know, we're able to do that with a hammer and a brass drift. Also getting the wheel bearing off, uh, you know, obviously there is that corrosion issue between the aluminum knuckle and the steel base of the hub assembly. Again, brass drift and using the original bolts to get it off worked out pretty well. Uh, so no crazy air tools or anything used in this video. Definitely something you can do at home by yourself. So we hope you learned a lot in this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave in the comment box below. Hit that like button if you like this video and hit subscribe. We have a lot more videos on the way. And as always, we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for watching.